What's up everybody, this is Brad and I'm gonna tell you about how to start with Google AdWords and be profitable on day one with six simple steps that you can apply today that are going to give you the best possible chance of being profitable on day one and avoid wasting tons of money. Now, why do you wanna do this? Number one, there's a myth that I hear from a lot of my clients and a lot of my internet marketing friends that you need to have a huge budget and you need to have you know, one to $10,000 on AdWords to get started. And I think this stops so many beginners, especially from even giving it a chance and trying to learn because they're waiting until they have this like magical cash of, of cash uh, sitting around waiting and not actually getting in there and learning. And, and this just doesn't have to be the case. So you don't need a big budget. You can start off if you know what you're doing, if you know how to start off with the best possible chance for highest conversions and not wasting any money. And that's not exactly what I'm gonna show you in the next six steps. So the truth is that you can potentially start off with profit on day one. And the way that you do that is you give yourself the best possible chance by eliminating as many variables and as much uh, guesswork as possible. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So it's very likely that you can start off, if you, obviously this, assumes that you have a good product that people are, are interested in buying, especially if you have an already proven product that, that makes sales, this is almost certain that you're going to start off with profit on day one if you follow these steps. So these, these six steps, if you follow these six steps, you will have the best chance to start off with profit on day one, like I just said, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start with step one. So step one is start with search. And what do I mean by that? Well, there's, a few different options with AdWords that you can use. You can use um, retargeting, you can use YouTube ads, you can, you can target all sorts of different placements, but the big two that are in use right now are search and display. Display is all those banner ads that you see all over the internet. Uh, people pay, or people get paid by Google to place those banners on their website. So if you get on the display network, you have access to millions of websites all over the world, it's insane and you can get tons and tons of traffic, tons of exposure, but it's harder to control. So right off the bat, if you wanna start off with the best possible chance for high conversions and not wasting any money and starting off with profit, you wanna start with just search. And especially when you start your account, it's gonna give you an option. And, and we're gonna to get to uh, this in one of the next steps, but Google is often going to give you options that you shouldn't take and they're not trying to hurt you or anything, they're just, they're trying to create a product that's most uh, applicable to as many people as possible. So they kind of have to like uh, water it down in certain ways. So one thing that they do is they lump display and search together in one campaign. You don't want to do that. So start off with just a search campaign. Don't, don't do display at, at the beginning because display is just a harder thing to master. But if you get it right, you can scale into millions like billions of impressions, it's insane. But we'll keep that for a, a later date. So start with search, number one. Step two, don't trust, and we just talked about this a little bit, but don't trust the default Google settings. Um, a lot of the settings are set up, like I said, to appeal to a very, very broad audience. They're trying to cover the, all the bases they can, as well as they can for all different sorts of businesses. But the default settings, while they're pretty good at getting you up and off the ground, they're also pretty good at just kind of spending your money. And if you don't have a big budget, which you know the audience watching this video, like most of my clients and most of my campaigns, we don't start off with a huge budget. We don't start off with you know fifty thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars a month to just blow on ads and figure out what works. We want to start off with the best possible chance of profitability on day one. So that's the second step. Don't trust the Google default settings. And in some later videos, I'll show you exactly uh, the steps that you, that the settings that you want to disable and enable to give you the best possible chance. But just know that there are certain settings that are less likely to be as targeted and precise from the beginning. And so you want to turn those off. Step three, and this is kind of a big, broad concept, but you want to get control as soon as possible. You want to get control of your spending, of your placements. You want to know exactly which people are going to be clicking on your ads, what they're searching for, and where they're going to go. This is going to, this is going to exponentially explode your chances down the line 
The earlier you get this down, that you get control of your keywords and you don't just let them go out and spend money all over the place, you are gonna exponentially increase your results and your profits down the road. But it's really important, especially in the beginning and especially on a very tight budget, that you have to have control from the beginning. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. You do that by starting with just, if you wanna be the most precise, you wanna start with just exact match keywords. Um, in a later video, I'll explain exactly what exact match keywords are and what the other types of keywords are. But for now, you can see on the screen that exact match keywords, it's basically, you know that the person, if the person, if this, if this ad gets shown, it means that the person searched for exactly what you put in these brackets. See how the, uh, on the picture, it has the words exact match in brackets. This is how you're gonna enter the keywords into Google's keyword uh, one per line rule. You're gonna put them in brackets. Now if you put them in brackets, there's a few different types of keywords and we'll cover that later. But for now, if you wanna start off with the best possible chance of profitability, start off with exact match. Why? Because it gives you the most control. It, it, so there's a difference between, um, for example, the keyword bagels if it's, it's, if it's what's called a broad match, it will, Google will go out and try to find things that are similar to bagels, muffins, cake, um, cookie, and it, it will use its intelligence of, of our language and everything and what people are searching for all the time to try to figure out close uh, relative things to bagels. On the other hand, if you have an exact match keyword and you put in where to buy bagels in Austin, Texas, and you put that all in brackets, then the only time that ad will ever show is if somebody searches for exactly that keyword. And so you know, if somebody searches for exactly that keyword, they are very intent on buying a bagel in Austin, Texas. That's very specific, and that's part of the control that we want to establish. So if you want to have your best possible chances then you want to start with using these brackets and using these exact match keywords. It's confusing in the beginning because they throw all these different weird words with phrase match, broad match, broad modifier, blah, blah, blah. But just if you want to start off with best possible chance of, of profitability, this isn't for scaling out and getting you know tons and tons of traffic, although there are plenty of exact match keywords that get lots of searches per month, depending on your business. If it's a local business, you really want to nail down these exact match keywords because you really wanna make sure that you're only targeting people who are searching for things in your area. And don't worry that you're missing out on all these different keywords and stuff because as you run your campaigns, Google's gonna start suggesting other exact match keywords that would be a good match. They're gonna use their intelligence, they're gonna help you out. But so don't worry if you only pick you know, 10 exact match keywords that you're, that you're missing out on all of the variations. Even with exact match now, Google still has a bit of a um, a leniency, they'll, they'll still try to match you with things that are kind of close to that exact match, but as close as possible. But this is where you want to start, exact match, that's really important. And then step five, start with the most urgent keywords. So Perry Marshall, very famous in the AdWords community, you know, he's one of the great teachers. Um, he, this is where I first heard this term um, from him, he calls them bleeding neck problems. So buying a bagel, our previous example, not really a bleeding neck problem. Think of this as, as a problem that people are just desperately in search of an answer for. And Google is amazing for this, by the way. Uh, Google is where people go to search for these types of things. Whereas something like Facebook, you know, people are just kind of like browsing around and you have to kind of catch their attention. When you nail down, an, especially an exact match keyword on Google, you know exactly or very, very close to what that person is thinking when they type that in. And that's why you wanna start off with your most urgent keywords. So if you're doing you know, real estate, you don't wanna start off with real estate. That's, that could be people who are looking into becoming a real estate agent, um, they're looking to become investors, they could be just kind of checking out the real estate market, they could just be trying to learn about real estate in general. Um, they could, there's so many different things. So you don't wanna target something so broad you want to target um, looking for a house in in San Marcos, Texas. That would be 
a better exact match keyword. And, and this, this one is, you just kind of have to think about it. You have to think like, what are the differences between somebody searching for bagel or bagel recipe and how to buy or where to buy a bagel? Those are two very different things that people are searching for. If they're searching for where to buy a bagel, they call it buying intent. And their buying intent is very, is a lot higher. Um, so you want to look for the, the most urgent keywords for your particular business or niche. Um, you know, in, in, in uh, services, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of examples for locksmiths. You know, you want to target the, the keywords like uh, late night uh, locksmith services or something like that. Like some, the most urgent needs that people have in your niche. So start thinking about that first. That'll just require your own expertise in your niche and your own brain power basically to think up. And obviously, um, as you start running your campaigns, maybe not, this isn't obvious, but Google will start to make more suggestions of different, different types of uh, variations on the theme of your, your keywords too. So they're going to they're gonna make a lot of suggestions, but you actually don't want to take most of them until you understand these different steps and the things we're gonna cover in other videos. So that's step five is start with your most urgent keywords. Don't start with your broad, anybody who might be looking for real estate you know, in your area. Start with the most specific desires that are closely related to buying or taking action. Whatever action you are looking for people to take with your keyword, target uh, exact match keywords that are as close as possible to that. And then, Finally, step six is start with retargeting. We'll talk about this a lot more later, but if you really, really want, and obviously this is conditional, this means that you already have a website and you already have traffic somehow. So if you already have traffic to your YouTube channel or your blog or something like that, then the easiest, most likely, most profitable place to start with running ads is to set up a retargeting campaign to people who are already visiting your site, or even better, people who are already visiting something as close as possible to the buying or the, the action that you want them to take, if it's calling you for a consultation or whatever. Find people as close as possible in the process, in the sales funnel of the action you want them to take. If it's buying, find people who get to the checkout page. And then again, we'll cover this later, how to set this up exactly but you'll wanna start with by just running ads to the people who made it all the way to that checkout page but then didn't buy. That would be your best possible chance because the distance that you have to get somebody to go from I almost bought, I put my credit card in but then I got busy and left to buying is such a little distance. Whereas if you go back to, let's, you know, we'll talk about this <laughs> later as well, but you know, the sales funnel, if you go back to the top people aren't really necessarily looking to buy when they first search for something. They might be just looking for information. And so you'll want to start with people who are already on your site, already ready to buy, and those are going to be your best possible chance to start right off with day one profit. So just to review, here are the six steps again. Step one, start with search. Don't start with display. Just leave that for later once you start getting uh, your search campaigns down and we'll cover more of display later, but just start with search. It's the most precise. You have the most control over exactly what your people are, the people that you're targeting are trying to accomplish. Step two, don't trust the default settings. Um, we'll cover more of which settings to disable and enable to give you the best possible chance to start off with as much control. That leads us to step three, get control as soon as possible. Get control of your keywords, get control of your ad groups, We'll cover a lot more of this. It gets you know more and more complex as you go, but this is where to start. Know that you need to get control. That should be your first priority. And then step four, you shouldn't just let Google you know spend money willy-nilly. Step four, start with exact match keywords. We covered that a lot. Step five, start with the most urgent keywords or bleeding neck keywords if you want something to remember that. Step six, start with retargeting. Start by retargeting the people who are already interested in your product, your brand, your site. So if you follow those six steps, you're going to give yourself your best possible chance to be profitable on day one, starting with AdWords, and we're going to cover more stuff in more videos, so stay tuned.